preposterous video is making the rounds online, presenting several misleading allegations about Islam in a transparent effort to promote fear and suspicion of Muslims. Under normal circumstances, the arguments of bigoted extremists on the fringes of society are hardly worth acknowledging. But with the anti-Muslim sentiment penetrating the mainstream, as evident by the controversy over Park 51 in Lower Manhattan, and the election of Islamophobes to Congress, one can no longer leave such ignorance unchallenged. The video opens with a clever message, encouraging people to think for themselves and to transcend the urge to limit their exposure to familiar views, thus projecting the sense that what follows must be objective and reasonable, the uncomfortable, unconventional truth, so to say. But what in fact follows are several obtuse allegations about Islam. 1. The video claims that the Quran, unlike every other religious book we are familiar with, is meant to be taken literally and is not full of symbolism or vague analogies. This claim is particularly preposterous because not only is the Quran full of symbolism, metaphors and analogies, but the Quran itself actually talks about how it is full of symbolism. What the video creators seek to do with this allegation is eliminate comparative analysis. Whereas many religious texts reference harsh punishments, for example, Samuel 15.3 of the Old Testament goes as far as to command the killing of the children of a disbelieving tribe, the video tries to argue, unconvincingly, that harsh religious passages should evoke outrage only if found in the Quran, no matter how tepid they may be compared to passages found in other religious books. One can examine Islam through the appropriate comparative lens when discarding this demonstrably false assertion. 2. The video claims the following. Islam and Sharia constitute a totalitarian means of ordering society. In the Quran, Allah makes it clear that man-made governments, such as a democracy, and free speech, such as criticizing the Quran, are abominations and must be eliminated. To take a closer look at the language, the video creators repeatedly use Allah instead of God to feed the illusory sense that Muslims worship a different God from Christians and Jews. In reality, it is the same God of the Bible as Muslims regard Jesus and Moses to be prophets of God. The word Allah is merely the Arabic word for God, seen in all Arabic translations of the Bible and used by Christian and Jewish Arabs throughout the world. The use of the word totalitarian is another feeble attempt at evoking ominous thoughts of oppressive rule, when in fact the Quran is not that different from the Bible in the extent to which it seeks to regulate social and political life. The video creators, as one would expect from bigots with a political agenda, single out Islam as an alleged opponent of free speech for containing the concept of blasphemy, when the concept actually already exists in the Jewish and Christian traditions. As for supposed opposition to man-made governments, one can't help but wonder what other type of government there is. It is worth noting that the political systems that govern Muslim countries are quite diverse, and that theocracies make up only a marginal fraction of them. The vast majority of Muslim countries live under civil systems that are either somewhat influenced by Sharia or not at all. That is to say, that not even in most Muslim societies is there a mainstream constituency for imposing Sharia. The idea that, in Europe and the United States, where there is even less of a constituency for this sort of thing, that a grave threat exists of Sharia imposition is palpably ludicrous. The very idea of imposing anything is contrary to Islam's core principle that there shall be no compulsion in religion. To be sure, there are Muslim extremists who carry out abhorrent acts of terrorism and who fantasize about imposing Sharia on the world. But these extremists are opposed first and foremost by mainstream Muslim communities. As President Obama noted, In fact, Al-Qaeda has killed more Muslims than people of any other religion. Furthermore, the principle of consultation, Shura, is another important principle in Islam mandating conference and deliberation and decision-making on matters that affect multiple people. That Islam is any less compatible with democracy than other religions is another myth for which there is not a shred of evidence. And as for the video's alarming assertion, 
that Islam commands offensive, aggressive, and unjust jihad, here's what the Quran actually states. God does not forbid you to be kind and equitable to those who have neither made war on your religion nor driven you from your homes. God loves the equitable. But He forbids you to make friends with those who have fought against you on account of your religion. Or, in another instance, if the unbelievers incline to peace, make peace with them and put your trust in God. 3. The video claims that Muslims are allowed to deceive non-Muslims. This assertion has been an effective propaganda tool, casting suspicion on the veracity of any Muslim who adopts a sensible, moderate, or constructive position. In essence, it seeks to paint the overwhelming majority of Muslims who are moderate as undercover extremists and as such not to be trusted. Dr. Hussein Ibish observes, This is of course immediately familiar to anyone with a familiarity with Western anti-Semitism, which has always held that Jews are religiously authorized to lie to, steal from, or even kill Christians and other non-Jews. Like most forms of contemporary American Islamophobic rhetoric, this calumny about generalized and religiously sanctioned systematic dishonesty has been transferred wholesale from Jews to Muslims. The idea that the doctrine of taqiyya constitutes a carte blanche for all Muslims to lie to all non-Muslims is at the heart of the slander. Ibish notes that it is likely that most Muslims have never heard of taqiyya and that he himself never once heard of the word until it was dug up by Islamophobes post 9-11 and presented as evidence of the inherent duplicity of all Muslims. As someone who grew up in five Arab Muslim countries for 16 years, where Islamic studies was a required class in school, and who also never once heard of the concept, I can confirm that sentiment. Contrary to the idea that Muslims are encouraged to lie to non-Muslims about their political ambitions to protect and spread Islam, as alleged in the video, the core concept is that Muslims are permitted to renounce their faith under persecuting circumstances to avoid immediate injury or death. To stretch this doctrine to include an endorsement of general mendacity for political purposes is, ironically, a dishonest attempt by the video creators and other Islamophobes to stir paranoia about Muslims for their own political agenda. The current anti-Muslim climate, particularly in the United States, has reached truly alarming levels. Indeed, Public discourse on Islam in the United States is worse today than it was in the aftermath of 9-11. The nine intervening years were not years of healing and education, they were years of incitement and miseducation, thanks to the tireless work of professional Islamophobes who orchestrated campaigns of misinformation to spread fear and hatred of Muslims. But we cannot lay the responsibility entirely on them. We must take up our responsibility to educate and fight against the forces of division. While they want a conflict between Islam and the West, or Muslims and Christians, that's their common cause with the Muslim extremists, we know that the real conflict is between the divisive forces of ignorance, superstition and hatred on the one hand, and the forces of pluralism, knowledge and coexistence on the other, and we must win this fight to ensure that this will be a better, more peaceful and harmonious world for our future generations.